Hello guys, how are you doing? Hope you're doing great. Absolutely fantastic. Right, I know I'm an advocate for this because I bought the QD OLED monitor and I love it. I really do love it. But when I'm looking around on YouTube or looking at reviews for monitors, all I'm seeing is OLED, W OLED, QD OLED, Mini LED. And that is what a lot of people are looking for now. I mean, like I said, I love my Alienware. QD OLED, it is fantastic. But this is the monitor I want to talk about. This is the Samsung G70A. And I bought this a little over six months ago. And what we got here is a 3840 by 2160 resolution, which is 4K, Ultra HD. And it has HDR, which we'll talk about. But we have a 28 inch panel with 160 PPI. When you're putting that many pixels in such a small space, that's why you went for the 28 inch model. It looks crisp, as you would expect 4K to be. So, the only difference is, is this one is IPS. Now, IPS isn't a dead technology, neither is VA, neither is TN. TN's still going very, very strong. But the way the month the market's moving is we are moving away from IPS at the minute, which is a good thing for us consumers because we want to see monitors like this drop in price and this particular Monday is still retail of the £650 here in the UK. Now, they do go on sale all the time. In fact, a week after I bought this, this got reduced straight away to £550. It's since gone back up, but it's always getting discounted. But here is the bonus part. That now we're moving into the age of OLED and mini-LED. We're going to see this technology reduce in price. This is what I will class the high-end monitor. It's 4K, 144 hertz response rate, 28 inches, and a one millisecond response time. And let me tell you, the clarity is brilliant. When I made my review on the Alienware AW3423DWF, I stated that the clarity was fantastic, and I maintain that. This is not far behind. In fact, it's very rare that I notice the difference. And... In my review for the Alienware, I did say I couldn't go back to gaming on such as this, but I wanted to test that, so I gamed exclusively with the Samsung G7 for three days straight. And what I realized is this is still very capable. It is hard to notice the difference. Now, was my review of the QD OLED wrong? No. Was my assumption about being so much better than the G7 wrong? I think so, because on paper, the input lag is lower on the G7 than the Alienware. Again, you cannot tell the difference. We are talking very minute differences. So there's not much of a difference there. I know it's advertised as one millisecond, but come on, is it ever? Unless you want to push it in the extreme overdrive, which is going to give you overshoot and some really dodgy transitions. Now, it has got four modes on the overdrive, but I tend to keep it on faster. You can get a backlight strawbot effect, which is the MBR, and that's quite good, but it does affect your brightness. And that's one thing I have with this monitor. It's not an overly bright monitor. Now, if you remember, I said I was worried about QD OLED not being bright enough, but it is a... It seems a little bit brighter than this. So, would I like it to be brighter? Yes, I would. But if you game in a dark room, that's not an issue. Anyway, I'm rambling. I have a habit of rambling. But my point is, there are a lot of people who don't want to jump on OLED, or can't afford OLED, or are just worried about the implications of screen burn. And this is what I will point them towards. Maybe it's not this monitor directly, but... What I'm saying is consider the current technologies we have. Because, like I said before, OLEDs, mini LEDs, they all going to flood the market, making these drop in price significantly. This currently retails for £650 here in the UK. I believe, give it a year down the line, you're going to be picking these up new, a little over £400. And secondhand, even less. So... That would be my recommendation. I mean, 
if you're a console gamer, this is perfect. It's 4K. It's got HDMI 2.1. So you can plug your PlayStation Xbox into it and get that full 4K at 120 hertz. Not an issue at all. It has a black stabilizer, which is really, really good on this. No one hides in corners when on this. So there's another good thing. And also, gimmickly, it's something you'd never use, but it's there. If you do like ultra wide content, this has a picture mode where it emulates it, but you get the black lines at the top and bottom. Wouldn't use it, but it's there. And I just thought that was a really strange inclusion. And it did intrigue me, but it looks ridiculous. This is also display HDR 400 verified. And when you get a VSA display HDR 400 verification, it means nothing. I mean, this has got eight edge-linked dimming zones, which isn't very good at all. So if you want to sleep with HDR, while it can do it, technically, it's just not very good at all. So the HDR will stay away from, but the SDR performance is top-notch and the colour this output is brilliant. The contrast ratio, it's IPS, so you get a thousand to one. Can't verify if that's exactly what this is putting out, but that's what's stated in the documentation. So yeah, a thousand to one contrast ratio, it's IPS. So that's one of the downfalls. Black uniformity on this particular model, I was actually quite impressed with. As you go up the corners, as you'd expect, a little bit of light bleed. But apart from that, your gradients from black to greys are really quite subtle. I mean, I put this up against my QD OLED, which is pure black. And yes, you could see there was a backlight there, but it wasn't as prominent as my BenQ monitor. That is ultra bright and very light grey. Would I go back to this full time over my QD OLED? No. Although, in many respects, it is as good as the Alienware. It, it just, it, it isn't it. Like I've stated before, I like ultra wide gaming. When I'm playing single player games, I love HDR. On, on another note for that, HDR is fantastic on the Alienware, and that's why you would get QD OLED or Mini LED. If you like HDR, that's where this excels. This, on the other hand, not so much. It's got very eight dimmer zones. It's not very good. And when I mentioned before the bloom, and it's not very good. So if you do get this monitor or similar IPS monitor that states HDR 4 to 400, just don't use it. Don't. It's, it's an absolute waste of time. It really is. But uh, as a gaming monitor, it really holds up. And like I said, these are going to reduce in price significantly. Someone left me a comment on my last video stating that they use VA and they were very happy with their VA. And that is the point. Just because technology is new does not mean to say you have to adopt it. If you are happy where you're at, then why create the extra expense? And if you are that person who's happy with the monitor you've got, but you just fancy something different, please just wait a little bit. Because like I said, IPS, VAs, high refresh rate TNs, they are going to drop in price. I mean, especially the high refresh rate TNs because now we get an OLED that's getting up to the 240 hertz range. We get in 1440p IPS that's getting close. I mean, the Alienware 2723DF, I think it is, it's an IPS monitor and it runs at 1440p and can be overdriven to 280 hertz. So TN's starting to lose that little bit of edge it had. So if you're looking for a 360 hertz monitor, they're going to reduce in price. And these IPS 4K high refresh rate are going to reduce in price significantly. And I state that with all the confidence because one, we have the new technology. We have OLED. We have Mini LED. Now, we can now get Mini LED, which gets up to 4K at 240 hertz. So we now have an older technology and a lower refresh rate than what is capable. Now, are you going to run your 4K games at 240 hertz? 
not anytime soon. Maybe it's another two generations of graphic card. Maybe it's possible. But right now, 144 is a sweet spot. I currently run a 3080 Ti. And when I'm playing Call of Duty, I can put DLSS on quality and I can get around about 160 frames on 4K. But it has very frequent drops and it's really map dependent. So would I ever buy a 4K 240 Hz monitor? Not yet. Considering when they come up, the prices of them are ridiculously high. And if I'm not going to be able to utilize them 240 Hz in 4K for another, let's say, two years, it would make more sense to me to wait for the two years when a lot of other companies have brought out 4K 240 Hz and pick them up the cheaper. Even that same mantra I was looking at just now, and it's offering me 4K and it's offering me 240 Hz, and it's giving me a price tag of 1700 pound. That exact same one out of two years down the line. I'm going to pick that up for what? A grand, 700 pounds saver straight away. And hopefully in that time, get the use out of it. But if I was to fork out 1700 pounds for it now, I would not get the use out of it. So, the way the market's moving, they're going to consider this all technology, IPS. 144 hertz. Is that it? Is that all you've got? But here's the secret as a consumer. That is all you need. It really is. I mean, how many people are running high-end graphic cards? Not many. Not many at all. Before I got the 3080 Ti, I was running an AMD Radeon 5600 XT. So that's where my performance laid. It was only wanting to do YouTube, I decided, you know what, I want to get a higher-end graphic card and I'm going to do some tests. And so I first went with the 3060 Ti and I thought, this is good. I like it. I like it a lot. And then I thought, I want to do comparisons. I want to do benchmarks. So I upgraded my full computer. I got a 12th gen processor and a 3080 Ti. And never looked back. But had I have not wanted to do YouTube, I would never have bought that. I would have cuddled along. Maybe it's not with the 5600 XT. I maybe it's one of upgraded and stuck with the 3060 Ti. The 3060 Ti would not saturate this monitor. I cannot run 4K 144 Hertz on Warzone or Call of Duty. And this is the thing. A lot of people who are going to buy 240 Hertz monitors cannot saturate them and are going to see no benefit. And the only thing it's going to make you do is fork out for a graphic card you don't need because you are completely happy with your graphic card until you got a monitor you could not saturate. Now imagine 4K, 240 hertz, and the way NVIDIA's price in particular is going, in two years down the line, we might be able to saturate that monitor. But how much are you willing to pay to saturate it? These are things you're going to think about when purchasing a monitor. If you're like me, I'll buy a 3080 Ti, and the 1440 monitor I was using was suddenly no good because I'm getting way too many frames. This monitor is too slow. It cannot keep up. So I then went for 144 hertz 4K. Now the monitor can keep up and they are in sync. They balanced. It works. If I was to upgrade to a 240 hertz monitor at 4K, where then I think, oh, this isn't working for me. My graphic card can't keep up. And that perpetual cycle just keeps continuing and continuing and continuing. You will never be satisfied because technology moves so fast. So I know that's long-winded, and I apologize. But my point is, if you are happy where you are at, just stay there. Because once you go down this rabbit hole, there is no turning back. But my overall recommendation, it does not have to be the Samsung Galaxy G7 4K. You can get any monitor. Bank U makes some fantastic ones. If you're willing to stick with 1080, I think the Bank U EX 2510, is a fantastic little monitor for consoles because here's another thing your console is capable of 4k 120 hertz fantastic that's brilliant but there's not many games you can run at 4k 120 hertz because they tend to have a performance mode and a quality mode so if you can get 120 hertz on 1080p you bump that up to 4k you drop down to 60 to 30 frames it's which side of the coin you fall on do you prefer visual quality or smoothness? It's personal choice. So, I mean, personally, for me, single player games, I won't say I'm happy at 60 hertz because I, I think the standard, the very low standard should be 75 hertz. 
But I've got no problem playing a single player game in high visual fidelity at 75 hertz. But a lot of the games I play as online shooters or such as racing games. And you'll see this one I'm playing here is I just did a quick race and then played the replay so I've got something to play. This is only hitting 108 frames, but I've got everything maxed out. And I'm happy with that. It doesn't need to be higher. It's smooth when I'm playing it. But it depends how fussy you are. I mean, a lot of competitive shooters, you turn settings down on them anyway. I don't. I just leave everything running as high. Because I like it. And if I'm still getting the frames at high, I mean, if, if you're playing on 4K, the reason to turn your settings down is one, you get better performance, but two, it's easy to see people. But when you've got the pixel density that you have, it's quite easy to see people with high settings. So you can have the best of both worlds. So at the end of the day, the crux of this video is, do you need the latest technology? I mean, me personally, to answer that question, yes, because OLED is the technology I've been waiting for for many years. Even back in the CRT days, the, this is the kind of technology I was dreaming of. Yes, I'll follow technology trends because I'm a massive nerd. I'm not going to hide it. I am. And I just like getting the newer things. Can I afford the newer things? <laughs> no. But I'm a devil may care kind of guy. You know, what mistake I made today, I'll fix tomorrow. And that's not a good way to live, but it's always served me well, so we'll stick with it. So if you are out to save money and you want a high-end monitor, and you don't want to pay over the odds. Yes, this is £650 to buy new. But like I said, if you shop around, you will find this for around about 550 and it often goes on sale at 550 And if you're prepared to go second hand, you can pick these up for £400. I'm currently selling this monitor. And I've took an offer of £350 for it. You know, because for me, it's just going to be sitting where the BenQ one is as a secondary monitor. So... Why doesn't someone else get use out of it? You know, but this is the thing. £350 for a very capable monitor. Compared to the Alienware, all you're losing is them deep blacks. The fantastic HDR performance and the ultra-wide aspect ratio. This has got everything else. You cannot tell the difference between everything else really when you are playing. So it's a no-brainer. Do you pay £1,000 for a monitor because you really want that HDR? If you play a lot of single player games, then by all means, have at it. But if not, stick with IPS, stick with VA, or if you're really competitive, TN. It just makes sense. And that's what it does. It makes absolute sense just to stick with what you know, because manufacturers are going to move away from this and they are going to want to clean your inventory. This is your chance to jump on it and get a fantastic monitor a fantastic deal so if you're into mines on OLED you obviously don't want it that much so my advice would be just wait just a little bit longer or look on the second hand market and as for that long winded rant I won't call it a rant I'll call it an informative video I like to call it if you agree please leave it in the comments and also tell me will you be upgrading or will you be just waiting for a while? Thank you very much. And as always, a like and subscribe is always appreciated. Thank you very much. Until the next time.